Hello, I'm Jeff Keaton. I'm the Scoutmaster for Troop 82 in North Andover, Massachusetts. I also serve as the membership chair for the Spirit of Venture Council. And I've had other jobs in scouting as well, such as being the Packmaster for a Cub Scout Pack. Since I'm a volunteer at both the unit and council levels, I thought I would talk to you today a little bit about the relationship between units and councils when it comes to membership. Uh, first, I just want to say that it's a uh, partnership between the two and that both units and councils working together in coordination uh, are necessary for a successful membership campaign. Uh, neither the council nor the unit on their own can provide everything that the other one can do. So uh, both are needed for successful membership. Uh, first, let me talk a little bit about what councils do. Councils are first that bridge between the national VSA organization and all the local units. The council makes sure that all the local units have the most current, up-to-date, and correct information when it comes to national policies like uh, the application process, the current fees, and most importantly, uh, safety. Um, <clears throat> next, the council comes up with the annual membership theme or campaign theme. This is the theme around which all the uh, membership events that the council runs is based. Uh, we, uh, it's, a, usually a, it's going to be a fun, family-friendly uh, theme. Um, we change it every year, uh, trying to keep up with what's, uh, what's working in other places. We look around the country to see uh, what they've, other councils have done that's worked well, as well as keep an eye out for our own local districts and units and see what maybe they've done that seems to have been really successful to, that we can recreate. Next, the, uh, the council provides all of the uh, marketing materials for the units, uh, whether they be physical marketing materials like uh, yard signs, posters, uh, printed backpack flyers, um, wall door hangers, uh, all kinds of different materials. Uh, we also provide the uh, all the sort of the digital marketing assets too, like uh, your the logos and the fun pictures that you can put on your uh, unit's Facebook page or uh, website. And then finally, of course, most importantly, I think, is that the council makes sure that all the adult volunteers are properly trained and background checked for safety. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about what the local units can do. Uh, the first thing uh, I wanted to say is obviously the local units are, are that most critical uh, step in the membership campaign because they are the first contact that new families have with scouting. They form that first impression that we can never recreate once it's gone. They're also uh, the, the closest to scouting their communities. Um, you know, the local units have those relationships that are needed for uh, scouting or to thrive. They have the relationships with the, uh, the school principals and the uh, church leaders um, to have charter organizations, but also to help uh, get those backpack flyers into backpacks maybe, or get the posters in the window of the local business, uh, get, get the word out about the membership night in the church bulletin, those kinds of things that are absolutely crucial for membership and for the scouting program. Uh, the next thing I want to make sure the scout, the local units need to make sure that their BeASCOUT.ORG PIN information is up to date. This is when you go, when a new family goes to BeASCOUT.ORG website and they find a unit that's near them and they fill out their information and click, you know, contact me. We want to make sure that that information goes to uh, an up to date uh, contact person. Um, so you want to make sure that that's up to date on BeASCOUT.ORG. Um, the local unit will also have uh, one or hopefully more uh, membership events in their communities. Um, these can either be done uh, by the individual unit or what we're seeing more and more of is uh, uh, units, multiple units in one community coordinating and having one big uh, membership event. Uh, you know, this might be like a Cub Scout pack, a Scouts BSA troop and a venture crew all coming together uh, at one place at one time to kind of show everything that the scouting program offers. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, ideally, the uh, local unit should have more than one event. Um, these can include, you know, your, your classical uh, uh, membership joining rally nights, you know, like a pack, a fun pack night uh, event or ice cream social night, uh, maybe at your unit. But uh, you should also think about including some other uh, events that uh, may be going on in your community, like uh, a, an open house night at your school or church. Um, 
as we come out of this pandemic and, and things are hopefully getting back to normal, uh, if there are any sort of community events in your community that might, might be uh, coming back on the calendar this fall, like uh, a Founders Day or a town carnival, that type of thing, uh, see if you can get a table at one of those, those events. Uh, and, and another good idea is to ask all your scouts who might be attending those events to wear their uniform. Um, to show the community like, hey, look, these are the people who are in Scouts. Maybe I want to do that too. Uh, and then, you know, the most important step that the unit has in uh, membership is, I know it seems straightforward, but is to accept the application from uh, families. Um, it uh, seems like a, a no-brainer, but uh, when you have a joining night and people come to uh, find information, they're coming to join your unit. So don't hesitate to ask the question, can I help you fill out an application now? <clears throat> but then uh, after you accept the application uh, and you take their money and you get them on your roster, uh, the, the membership job isn't quite over yet for, for the unit. Uh, I recommend that all units create a uh, new membership coordinator. And uh, what the new membership coordinator does, he or she helps uh, all those new scouting families that are unfamiliar with how scouting works and, and what you're doing, uh, get up to speed. You know, the first month or so, usually new families in uh, your unit might not be fully hooked up to your unit's uh, email newsletter or the calendar or in your scout book page yet. Um, but those first two months are very crucial in getting them uh, onboarded, we say, into your unit. So the new membership uh, coordinator makes sure that hey, it calls them up and says, hey, you know, we have an ice cream sundae this, this weekend, or there's a fishing derby on the pond this weekend. We want we'll to make sure you, you knew about that. Uh, as well as serves as, can answer all those questions about scouting that uh, they probably didn't know to even ask when they joined. Uh, you know, there were questions about uniforming or, or handbooks or, or uh, you know, how does advancement work? Those kinds of things that they, you know, they'll have those questions. And we find that units that, that do this, that have a new membership coordinator, have a much higher retention rate for scouts, but most importantly, I think, is they have a lot more success in recruiting adult volunteers to help out with their units. So these are just a couple of the ways that units and councils work together in uh, new membership. Um, I uh, look forward to welcoming all these new families of scouting with you this year. Thank you.